ambition of very rough and brutal chase down the streets of Gotham. I didn't want to make it look conventional. And with the help of Rob Alonso, director of Second Unit, and Eunice Hoddard as a stunt coordinator, we created something that is quite unique. And it's relentless, and it's quite a thrill ride. Whenever you do a, a chase sequence, there's always a, a period of time that you have to think about what you're doing, because you're limited in what you can do. So the preparation is really important for us. What helps is storyboards. What helps is good communication within all departments. It's at the beginning of the movie, so there's a lot of energy in that first scene, and a lot of it comes from the power of the bad bike. The biggest thing that Andy wanted was, well, biggest is the right word, because he wanted a tank. He wanted a motorcycle that was built like a tank, nothing like he'd ever seen before, in scale, anyway. We saw the concepts. I mean, it's really large. It's nearly 10 foot long. It's over three foot wide. It was something that Andy always wanted to do practically, but it was seen as being, oh, we'll never be able to turn the thing around, we'll never be able to get it to go up to speed and all that. And this was one of those situations where Eunice was very excited about the bat bike and what it could do. And the pair of us, we were constantly trying to add more things for the bike to do because we felt it was such a presence. SFX stopped building a bike way, way, way before we're even talking about anything. And then SFX will give us this skeleton. And then Rick English will go off, drive it, ride it, come back, change this, change that. How do you feel about putting the um, fake tires on the front? Yeah, we, should, we need to like. test it. Yeah. By the time that bike was ready to shoot on, Rick had rehearsed so much on it that people were just looking at him in wonderment how he could even manage to, to make the bike so light and so agile. Working closely with visual effects, we made a bike that could drive at over 80 miles an hour. It could handle really well. So they built working electric bikes, which were, you know, which were clad, so they were in camera. Certain things would have to be right, scissoring double wheel at the front would have to be digital, removal of the drive chain at the back and that stuff. But, little, but basically, it was probably, you know, 85% physically in camera, which is amazing. Yeah, the guys have done a great job with it, to be honest. It's a proper piece of engineering. We've made two practical bikes, and we've made one that goes on a motion base for Ben Affleck. And that bike shows off the uniqueness of the two front wheels that actually kind of rack and move. Falcone's idiot kid decided to put a clue together and bust into the lab at Gotham camera. And park lab. We needed to find a place where we could basically create havoc in the streets that had a Gotham feel to it. And Blasco did the trick. But then, of course, we have things that certainly cannot be shot in a city. Ah! So we were shooting them at an airfield about half an hour from our studio. We rehearsed every part of Glasgow on the Bovenden airfield here in London. That's what made Glasgow so successful. We knew the lengths of the streets, the widths of the streets. We anticipated where there would be cars, parked cars, moving cars. And then, step by step, we did the sequence on a, an airway field. That's the key to anything like this, where you're gonna do things that are tricky. I very often get bored of action scenes that are overextended or they don't present enough changes or twists during the course of the sequence. So I, I had that in mind very much when we designed the scene. My work with Rob Alonso, the second unit director, was very close, which is the fun part of working with stunts and second unit, which is basically you're playing with toy cars and little models of the city, and it's like, what if we do this? So what I do is I basically chess piece all of the vehicles and I write those vehicles down on an overhead plan, the paths of each and every character and interactive vehicle with either the villain's Hummer or the Bat Bike, so that Andy can see how the sequence goes from first act, second act, third act of an action sequence, so it crescendos at the right time. 
one curveball for us was uh, we had to cannon a truck within one of the sequences. So it was a huge semi truck and trailer, and they wanted it to drive down the road, a tire blow out, and then for it to flip over onto its side with a driver inside and then explode. So it was then building something that was safe enough to have a, have a driver in it for real, flip over and then catch fire while keeping the drive safe at all times. I think we built three in the end, didn't we? Yeah, we did. We built one test and then two to be shot on. What I appreciate about Rob and Eunice is that they, they don't hold back. When I give them more freedom, it's more fun to them. They come up with better outcomes and results. That is a wrap. Thank you. Yeah. We had about two weeks to shoot the sequence. It was something to be proud of for sure. We definitely surpassed what we set out to do, but it all boils down to having that magic time in prep. Well done, Mr. Wayne. Will you be home for breakfast, sir? Yes, I think so.